In this example, we're asked to calculate the mass flux through the control surface shown here. It's uh, half a cylinder. We're, so, we're told to assume it's unit depth into the page. I'll just say it's uh, distance w into the page. So let's, let me make a change there. Assume a depth w into the page. And the velocity coming uh, into that surface is given here. It's a uniform velocity going horizontally. And the control surface has a diameter d. So we're trying to find the mass flow rate here. So let's write out the equation. The mass flow rate is just the integral through, over the control surface of rho u rel dot dA. Now that little bit of area that we're referring to here will be, I'll, I'll make it this little area. So I'll put a normal vector on it, n hat. That little area, if I call this radius r, let me put this as my angle theta. So that little area there will be r d theta. d theta is the little angular displacement this way times w, which is the depth in and out of the page. And since I da down here is a vector, I should make this a vector as well. So let me put a coordinate system. Let's call this going up y. Let's say going that way is x. So my n hat here, so that, that now is a vector. So expanding on my n hat, it's going to be a minus cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. Okay, so I'm just taking the horizontal component of n hat. So it'll be cosine theta. Remember, n hat's a unit vector, so it has a length of one. So it'll be a cosine theta pointing in the minus x direction and a sine theta pointing in the positive y direction. So that's where that comes from. Now the velocity, relative velocity term here is just the velocity of the fluid relative to the control surface. So the, let me write that down, the u rel is the velocity of the fluid minus the velocity of the control surface. Well, the control surface velocity is zero. And the fluid velocity will just be v i hat, right? It's v here in the positive i hat direction. So let's substitute these in. Let me not put the limits on my integral just yet. So this will be v i hat dot r d theta w times minus cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. All right, so I've just substituted in my dA, which is right here, down there, and my relative velocity, which is right here and there. So that's what we have so far, and we're going to have to integrate that. And you see that what's varying here is the theta, the d theta. So my, d, my theta is going to go from a minus pi over 2, which would put me down here, all the way up to a positive pi over 2. All right. So let's go ahead and do the dot product, because we have this dot product here. The dot product, I just have the i hats. The j hat doesn't matter. It's only the i hats that get dot product, or that, that remain. So let's write that out. So that's what happens after we do the dot product. There's a negative there as well. All right, and then we can go ahead and perform our integral. So the rho, v, r, and w all come outside the integral. And we're left integrating a cosine theta d theta. That will just be a sine theta from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 which comes out to be 1 minus a minus 1, so that's just equal to 2. So in the end, what we get is a minus rho v times 2r times w. And the 2r, by the way, I could also just write as a diameter. So that's our mass flow rate. The negative here refers to the fact that the, the mass flow rate is coming in to the control surface. It's, it's actually coming into the surface rather than out. So that's where we get the negative from, just showing that the mass flow rate is coming in. Now, if you take a look at that for a moment, you'll realize that 
when you look at the area here, that area is just actually the projected horizontal area that we have up here. Rather than, so, so that, that d times w is really just this distance. In fact, let me put it in a different color. It's just this distance times the distance in and out of the page. So this is d, recall. So the actual area that the flow is coming through is, if you look at the mass flow rate here, we could have just taken the mass flow rate through the projected area in the x direction, which would, the projected area is d times w. It's the area you would see if you're just looking at it from that direction. And that makes sense because whatever, whatever mass flow rate passes through this surface is also going to pass through this surface. Right? You'll get the same mass flow rate between the two. Whatever goes through this blue one will be the same that goes through this kind of curved dashed one. So it makes sense that you'd get the same mass flow rate between those two. So when you do these mass flow rates, you can um, actually use projected areas as well. We had a similar thing when we were calculating hydrostatic pressure forces where we could use the projected area to find the, the hydrostatic pressure force rather than the actual curved area or angled area. Same sort of thing occurs here as well. All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.